Hi, this is JD and I am here with Joystock. Who does not need some happy news these days? Just in time for the United Nations annual International Day of Happiness on March 20th, the results of the 2021 World Happiness Report have been released and the results will put a smile on your face. Despite the ongoing pandemic that has killed more than 2.6 million people around the globe. For the fourth year in a row, Finland has been named the happiest country in the world, with Iceland coming in second, followed by Denmark, Switzerland and the Netherlands. Every year the United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network publishes its World Happiness Report, a study that examines the connections between happiness and development, all while encouraging policymakers to place more of an emphasis on the former. Around 1,000 people in each United Nations member state rate their quality of life on a scale from 0 to 10, while researchers cull data from six areas, GDP per capita, life expectancy, social support, trust and corruption, perceived freedom to make life decisions and generosity. Negative emotions of worry, stress, sadness, anger and physical pain are at an all-time high across the globe. But there is a small handful of people who live a much less stressful and happier life than the rest of the world. What can we learn? from the world's happiest people on the secrets to happiness in life and work. Over the past 15 years, Dan Butena, a National Geographic researcher and New York Times best-selling author, has been exploring the healthiest and happiest places in the world to uncover the secrets of happiness and longevity. In his book, The Blue Zones of Happiness, Lessons from the World's Happiest People, it's an audiobook, Butena reveals his findings from visiting three of the world's happiest places, Singapore, the Cartago region of Costa Rica and the city of Alborg in Denmark. Whilst the people within each of these countries may seem to be worlds apart, Butena discovered that they all share a common theme, financial security, a strong community and a sense of purpose. Now, before I continue, as usual, I would request you to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell icon to keep in touch and keep a tab on my future episodes. Please also like or dislike and put in your valuable comments. Do share my content if you like them. Now, since 2012, Nordic countries, which include Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Iceland, consistently turn up at the top of the list. This is no coincidence. Nordic countries rank so high on the happiness report because they have things like free education and healthcare, low crime rates, cashy social security nets, a relatively homogeneous population, and they are prosperous. Perhaps more importantly, these countries prioritize balance, which is the formula for happiness. They are not societies that are aiming for all the effort and time to become gazillionaires. They are looking for a good balance of life and the results are extremely positive. A full-time work week at Denmark is typically 37 hours spread over the course of five days but what is even more striking is the dense attitude towards working long hours. While many in the world see working late as badge of honor and a way to get ahead, in Denmark it is seen as a weakness. It shows you cannot get things done in the allotted work time. Most employees leave work around 4 p.m according to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Denmark. In Denmark, full-time employees are guaranteed five weeks of vacation time, regardless of their position or field of work. 
If you try to contact someone in Denmark and Sweden in late July or August, they will highly likely be away enjoying the vacation time. In Finland, many people spend their summers in cottages called Maiki, where they unplug and relax with family and friends. People typically go on stress leave when the things are so bad at work that it's affecting their mental health. This safety net between jobs is part of Denmark's flexicurity labor market model, which allows businesses to be flexible and people to get security from the government. Under this model, it is extremely easy for employers to fire and hire people. On the flip side, employees can pay a fee of US dollar 62.54 a month on average to an unemployment insurance fund and get up to two years of pay if they lose their job and meet certain requirements like minimum earning and residency requirements according to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The government also provides education and counseling to get people back to work, but happiness is just one piece of the puzzle. Although the culture and safety net in Nordic countries seems to promote happiness, life is not all warm and yoga. They pay for this every single day and they do it in more than one way. Nordic countries pay some of the highest taxes in the world. In Denmark, for example, there is a 25% sales tax and a 150% tax on cars. People in Nordic countries are happy to pay those taxes because they get great universal social service in return, day daycare, public education, including college and healthcare. Does trust in institution and other citizens create a fertile ground for building a welfare state model with extensive social benefits? Does the welfare state model contribute to low crime and corruption, which leads to citizens to trust each other more? Most likely, both directions of influence play a role, leading to a self-reinforcing feedback loop that produces high levels of trust in the Nordic region and a high functioning state and society model. Many theories have been put forth to explain the high level of Nordic happiness from successful modernization and the ability to support better, the less well off, to high levels of social capital. The most prominent theories as regards Nordic happiness are welfare state generosity, institutional quality, low level of income inequality, freedom to make life choices, trust in other people and social cohesion. That is all for today. Thank you and goodbye for now. See you in my next episode.